the, the fact that you guys are nine and zero, the fact that you've had the success that you've had this season, is this? When you knew that this was going to be a good season, is this what you had in mind, or is this even maybe be a little bit beyond what you would expect? I mean, to start out nine and zero, you, you can't really expect that. You know, it's been done a handful of times in the Big Ten, let alone. Um, but you know, we we believe we have a chance in every single game. Um, you know, and the ball has bounced our way to be fortunate enough to be nine and zero. So you know, I, I I envision having a successful season. Um, but to start out like this and, you know, just getting guys um, playing at a really high level, um, you can't really all expect everyone to play at a high level like this. Why do you think, you mentioned the ball bouncing your way occasionally. Why do you think that's maybe been the case? I know you weren't here last year, but CJ could have tested. Didn't, that didn't seem to be the case. Is that a case of you guys are just connected and you find ways to make those plays happen? Or why do you think some of those little things are going your way? Yeah, I think it's the case because I touched like last year, a lot of their games came down to the wire where they weren't winning those games. Now they are winning these games. I think that's just a testament of a mature, maturity factor just with, you know, CJ having another year under his belt, um, obviously bringing back Kata and Jay Sean being there in camp. Um, just a collective group. And I mean, Caleb Wesson's been a guy who's won a lot of basketball games in high school and Andre's been won state championships. So, and Kyle Young, like people have won championships and now you put them all together. Um, it should be a winning culture out here. So that's how I kind of feel about it. How do you manage the expectations, though? Because, like you said, not no one expected nine and zero. And how do you manage enjoying the the run, but also, you know, taking that game by game approach? Because I imagine you want to appreciate it while it's while it's happening in the moment. Uh, I just say we get we got to get better every day. Um, we got to get get ready for this practice right here. Um, take it day by day. We, had success in the past, but we, we can't really look past the now. It's, it's behind us now. We, you know, even if we won those games, lost those games, it's behind us. We got to look forward. So this Thursday, we got to be ready to play because Penn State will be coming out and give us their best shot. And so we got to be ready. What stands out to, about Penn State when you when you watch them on, on film? Three to one. Uh, they got a lot of talented players. Um, the game last year came down to the final shot. Uh, literally the final second of the game. So we know they'll be ready to play. It's pretty much the same team as they had last year. Uh, they've been in a couple of um, good games this year in the Big Ten. So I mean, it's going to be another grinded out game. Um, coaches talk a lot about how you know you guys are going to get knocked around and there's going to be tough stretches when you go through the Big Ten. Was that game on Monday maybe another reminder of that? Not that these games have been easy, but just that that really seemed like it was maybe the most I get out of a game in a while. Was that Force you guys to remember some, some grit and some toughness things that you're going to need to handle some of these situations in the second half of the season. Yeah, coach was preaching to us uh, after the Minnesota game how Nebraska was going to come out and just it was going to be a full 40 minute game. They weren't going to give up. We weren't going to give up. And we were just going to kind of go blow for blow as if it was a boxing, boxing match. So we just kind of uh, stayed with it. Um, they made a, a couple of runs during, during the game, including the beginning of the game. And we just had to stay with it. Uh, trust each other, and that's what we did. How hard is it to keep buying into that message, though? I assume that every, after every game, coach is like, hey, the next one's going to be really hard. The next one's going to be really hard. How is it to stay focused on that message and for it not to get redundant? It's easy. I mean, you're winning. Like, winning never gets old. Like, every time we win, we celebrate the same way. Um, that's, that's the main thing. I mean, like, everyone enjoys winning. Everyone's happy. The coaches are happy. It's a great feeling to be here the next day. You can't, you, sometimes you can't wait to be here the next day. So, I mean, that's kind of the joy behind it. CJ, you, you've talked quite a bit this year about just what the lack of respect for this team before the season, how it's motivated everybody, and even you individually, um, how it's motivated you. I just wondered, Obviously, in high school, you had to be a star, or else you wouldn't have been you wouldn't be playing at this level. But have you always played with a chip on your shoulder? And even if you were a star in high school, where did, where did the chip come from? If you were, um, I guess just kind of the coaches I've had, I kind of have to play with a chip on my shoulder. I'm not really the fastest, most athletic guy, so. Um, I kind of look at it as I'm already behind on the distance, especially in the point guard spot. You know, a lot of these guys that we have to guard are, are faster than us and stronger and you know, more athletic. So you just kind of have to 
believe in yourself and what you can do and just play with a little bit more aggression than you normally would. He's talking about burning me, by the way. Yeah, last <laughs> seven, seven, seven. When, when is the first time you remember that being the case of you having a, how, 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 how old were you? Uh, seventh grade, was seventh grade summer. Why? Going to eighth grade. Why? Uh, God, that's just kind of when I realized that's what I wanted to do, uh, play basketball. And then kind of realized, when I, less once I realized that I can actually do this. Were you, were you smaller than any, everyone yeah. at that time? Yeah, definitely. I had the same now. So, not to keep harping on, you said you look at the next thing, look at the next thing, but to, to get through the stretch that you guys just went through four games in nine days and to not have a slip up, what enabled you guys to, to do that? I mean, is it just that mentality of look right ahead? I mean, I think there's probably some balance of rest and and also probably some mental games. How are you able to navigate such a tough stretch? Of, it's not been easy. Yeah, well, the win-loss column doesn't say that we had any slip-ups, but in film, there were plenty of slip-ups. So that's what we kind of um, look at, like, um, you know, building habits. Sometimes some of us have bad habits that we that are noticeable on film, so we try to correct those. So those are the kind of things that we try to correct. Because we know, like, we're not, we're not satisfied. We're not, like, tuning our own horn. We, we, haven't, we haven't done anything. Yeah, like there, we've done. We've all we've done is put ourselves in a position to be in position to make a postseason run. Uh, coach, after the game the other night, said that the connection between the staff and the players is, is strong, and that happened quicker than he anticipated it might. And I know, like, winning creates good vibes, and that helps. But beyond just the success you guys have had on the floor, why do you think you all have been able to connect with this new coaching staff so quickly? I think. When, when I first stepped on campus and I started having individual workouts um, with Coach Pete, you could just see how much they cared and like how much they appreciated for you just even being here. Um, and that's what like, you know, I can't speak for CJ, but that's kind of what had me buy in and I could see like the work ethic everyone else had, even in open gyms, like you could tell this was a competitive group that didn't really care if they were getting, I mean, it's, it's open gym and you want to play well, but you also want to win and stay on the court. And that's when you could really tell, like, this team could have something. Obviously, we struck, we, I mean, we had a couple lapses in our first few games. We got knocked around in um, the PK-80. Um, but I think that was a testament to us not fully, fully bought in yet and not knowing what this team could be, like, be something special, I guess. How about for you, CJ, you and everyone else in the team, came here expecting to play for a certain group of guys and they left you to play for a new group. I know that transition is difficult, but why do you think that it's, it's happened so quickly that you have this bond with this coaching staff? Because uh, we have work on common goal, and that's just the wins. And they want to win just as much as I want to win, and just as much as Andrew. So we kind of just had it, that was the kind of initial thought. And when Coach Holt first stepped in the room, he explained that he was everything, how it was going to be laid out. He's a player's coach, and everybody kind of liked them and bought in at that moment. We, you know, we have dinners at his house, so it's, it's kind of like a relationship with him outside of basketball, and that goes a long way. And he mentioned that he, like, he like snuck over and met with you guys that Friday before he was introduced. Just that, that initial meeting, how important was that to, to get to talk with him and get to know him a little bit before like the world got to, to know him, I guess? Oh, it was definitely big, just so you can see the type of person he is, where he was coming from. Um, we knew that he had success last year just based on, you know, being in college. And we once that he came over and actually talked to us before, it kind of showed that he cared and it was, he wasn't just in it for himself. Okay. One more, go ahead. Um, lately here, you guys have been playing on the court at the same time, more and more so, it seems like, you know, these recent games. Just, um, I guess, how has that chemistry been like with both of you guys on the floor? Obviously, you guys are both like point guards. Just how's it been for you guys? Uh, I think it's been pretty easy. You know, I'm playing with another guy who sees the floor exceptionally well um, and can shoot it. He's playing at a high level right now. And I just tell him, like, if I get the ball in transition, just go. Like, I'll throw it up to you. You go make a play or vice versa, really. I mean, um, so, I, I mean, it's been a lot of fun. It's been a joy because we, we trust each other out there to, to make the right play down the stretch.